Hello and welcome to Take 18. I'm Ahmad Adnan and in this video we are going to discuss about navigations. So how you can give the end user the navigation option so that whenever they click on something then it has to navigate automatically. They don't need to manually go and select from the lot of records what they have. This actually happens in a case where we have given an example of a list of table and user has selected some values. Let's say for example they selected here P007. Now user want to go to this 8 or 6 on this particular thing. For example, if they want to go for 8, then they can just click on this right arrow, which is has to go up value. To click on this one, then this will automatically convert this value and showing up here value for 8 here. Similarly, if they want to go to the 9 here, now you can see it is now showing up here 9 and everything is showing up also value here. So if they want to come back here, like the reverse previous value, then you can just click on this option, then it's going to reduce the value here. So this actually gives an user experience easily for the end user in order to work on this part. Similarly, this is particularly when we have this option about text and the number as a serial number, which is I'm taking considering this as a navigation text here. Now, if you have the serial number, which is now only integer value, which is on this particular part. So if I click on this thing here, three, and now if you move to this one to the four, for example, if I click on this one, then this is now moving into four. Now, if I again switch here, this is going to move again to 3. And then if I click back here, then this is going to move here to 2 here. So how this can be possible, we are going to look into this one. So if, uh, before to that, if you notice this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. But make sure to turn on the notification on your devices. I am repeating this again and again because as per YouTube analytics, 90% of my viewers are not my subscriber, which is a sad thing. I request you all, please subscribe to my channel. This helps me a lot in order to boost my confidence and do a lot more and more extensive advanced topics here. All right, coming back here. Now, just first of all, we'll focus on this thing, which is the serial number integer here. How to generate auto serial number? If you haven't seen that, I request you to please go and check out that video first and then come back here so that you can also learn how the auto generation number works here. All right, now switching on to this right arrow button, which is an icon also here. And here on this part, I can see on select property. So if I click on that, it's going to apply the same logic, which is I'm using this clear colored option, column selected category, because this particular thing, which is showing up here on this part, right? This is actually one single value of the product table, which is the main table. And from that, I'm taking one single value. So that's what I'm giving up name here, column selected category. So I'm clearing that one and then Clear collect, right? And then I'm applying some logics here. What is that? Is category from the table, product category key equal to value dot text dot which is available on this particular thing plus one. As this is only number, I'm just using plus one here. Two means three, three means four, and that's how it's going to work on that one. So it is taking up only one single value and applying that value as a filter parameter and then finally loading up those values here. Now you can see update context. I'm taking the variable category here as a product category key. And this is also first of product category name here. Now we need to add one more thing here because of the image which is not updating here. So where image link which is equal to the same logic we can apply first of column selected category dot image. That's it. So if I do so, even as you can see the demo, the image wasn't working fine. Now, if I click on this particular thing, then this image also will change here. It is not changing up for now. Let's have a look here why it is. Oh, it's the same image. So if I click on the next again, yeah, now it is changing up here. All right, that's a good one. So similar thing, what we need to do here, let me copy this here. I need to use in another area as well. All right, so once you do so, then you need to update the context here, which is I'm definitely defining it into a variable and which is the category key, category name, and as well as the image link. So these things I'm actually applying that here inside to these controls here, which is showing up here. As you can see, if I click here and then click on default value, or you can see it is going to apply via category key for this one. And for this, it is has to be um default value which is where category name here and for this one actually i need to apply the default value which has to be as of now it is nothing showing up here so if i'm removing this one this has to be where image link once i do so then this is going to add that information here as of now there is no image 
So that's why it is showing up here. Okay, the no image also an image. So that's why it is showing up here. That's a good one. So now if I click on the left arrow here, I need to also make the changes here and then select here and then click on on select. Here also the same thing. The only difference is I'm just using minus one here. Previously on the right hand side, it's a plus one and the left hand side, it's a minus one here. So adding up this value now. All right, if I save and run this one, now, if I click on left, it's going to show everything changes here. If I click on left here again, this is going to show my value here. That's beautiful. So the user experience got improved. Right? They don't need to go and select from this drop down from this window. So as of this example, the content is very less. So it is now covering both this table and as well as the entry form in one single window. But in reality, if it contains in two different pages, then in that case, it's hard for user to go and navigate there and then look for the information and then navigate here. So if you give this kind of option for the end user, this will be much helpful for them. Now, we have seen about the integer value. Let's have a look into how this can be achieved using if you have a text value similar to this one. So for example, if I have the P007, I have selected here. Now, if I need to move this to P008, in that case, how this can be possible. Now, let's have a click on the right arrow here and then from this icon, let's select on select property here. So here we need to use the same logic what we have saw on that part. During the sequence serial number generation, right? The same logic here. So selecting this right value from this available value and then using this value and then using the plus one value here and keeping up that value. So let me go through this one by one because not any the big thing here. So first thing here. So this is basically the value showing up here product category text category key all right so txt category key here now coming up here i am updating a contact which is showing up here in sample id navigation that's a variable and i'm passing that value here so taking this another variable here where i'm just taking the right side of the five digit because i don't want to take the p which is the first sequence number here so i'm removing that totally from six i'm taking the right of the five digits here so, and then I'm adding up one value here. So, if I'm getting a 0007, plus one means it's going to be 0008 here. That's what I'm going to get the value on this particular part. So, and then I'm using again the same, reusing the variable here, and then using a switch statement where if this value, which is going to show up here, if it is greater than 1000, I mean 10,000, uh, this has to be P and add this value here. If this is greater than 1000, then it has to be this value. You need to add this kind of value. Finally, we are going to get this information here. So here, what actually it does. So right now we are into the sample number seven, the entry number, category number seven. So here this is going to give the value of 007 plus one means it's going to return only eight value, not the 008 kind of thing. It's just going to give me the value of eight because if you are converting a text into a number, then whatever the zero before to any number is going to be neglected. That's the default behavior. So here in this case, it's going to give me that return value of eight here. So that eight is going to look here one by one. So this is not going to applicable on this part because the value is less than 10 here. Also not on this part, also not on this part and also not on this part. Finally, this is going to come here, concatenate P00 and then it's going to add that value, which is eight here. So if the value is more than 100, for example, 113, in that case, it's going to come up here, then it's going to add P00 and then 113. That's the value it's going to add up here. So taking this variable logic here inside to this particular variable, and then using this again, clear color column selected category. I'm just taking, clearing this selected value and then looking for the information on the category table from the data source by applying the filter of the category key equal to P008 here. That's the new logic which is coming up here. And once I have this value inside of the collection, then I'm going to update the context here, which is the category key, category name here, and then I need to use one more thing, which is image link here. That's good. Okay, variable image, I'm using the same thing because I'm using the, reusing the same logic here. So once we are done with that one, let's save and run this one. I just applied it for the right hand side. So right now we have P007. If I click on to the right side, then this is going to convert into the eight. And if I click again here, then this is going to change the value of everything. So nine showing up here, everything looks good. Similarly, if we need to go make the changes onto the left-hand side as well. So if I click on the left-hand side, 
and then here it has to be on select property everything remains the same previously it was plus one and now it is showing up here minus one the right means plus one minus means on the left hand side so using the same logic i don't want to repeat that so i'm just adding up here the image link and then save and run again now if i click again on the right hand side it has to give to the new record all right if i click on this particular thing and it's now changing up here seamlessly here that's beautiful all right now one more thing here is like if I run this application now and this is right now I'm into the last record here. If I still if I click on this one, what will happen? Now this is showing up here blank. Nothing is there because there is no record available on this part. And that's why it should work for the end user so that they can also get aware of that. Now if you think that this need to be converted into disable in order to say that there is no value available in that part. In that case, what we can do here, whenever we load this Page the screen itself, we need to capture the last value available inside to that particular table. So, for example, even we can also do it here in this case. So, if I click on this part and then if I see that this value doesn't contain any information, so if I click here and then we can apply a logic here, which is if count rows of this particular, what is that, of this particular collection is greater than one or greater than zero then only it has to apply these things or else it should not apply this logic here that's actually a needed here because unnecessary we are going to show the blank values here so let's try it again and then we need to do one more thing here so here let's copy this here before running this one and then if on this icon which is the button here here on this display mode by default it is showing up here edit so here I just want to change the logic here. So if this count rows is greater than zero, then only it has to be edit or else it has to be display mode dot disable here. I don't know, I don't want this to be disabled mode. And now you can see it is showing up here in disabled mode. That's cool. So if you let's run this one, save and run. And I'm selecting it here, any value here, which is showing up here P008. And now if I click on this value arrow, now everything looks good. So when here, if I navigate to the right hand side, this is showing up here now eight. And now if I click on this one, this is showing up here nine. And now selecting on this one, this is showing up here 10. And now if I click on this part, then this is not changing anything, but it is disabled here. So it actually gives an end user the information about there is no record available after that. So it is good to stick with this one. So you need to come back here to the previous section if you want. So if I click on this previous one, now it is not changing up here seamlessly here. So the same logic you need to apply for these things in order to use the further more user experience on that part. So if you like this video, just hit the big thumbs up button. If you noticed this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. But make sure to turn on the notification on your devices. Share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any queries and feedback, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. See you in the next video.